Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's teaching research webinar series. Today, my colleague Tricia Clark is going to be discussing awareness of and finding information resources. This session is being recorded, and we will send it to all registrants after the event later today. It's also posted on our YouTube page for the public, so feel free to share it widely. We will also have time for questions, both recorded and unrecorded at the end, but please feel free to put your questions in the chat at any time. So take it away, Trisha. All right. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. So as my colleague mentioned, my name is Trisha Clark. I am the Community College Engagement Librarian here at UDC. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can help your students figure out and understand what kind of information they need, where to find the information they need, and how to evaluate that information. And of course, there'll be questions at the end. So in the context of a classroom, um, the types of information your students will need is often dependent on several things, uh, including the assignment requirements, the individual research needs of that student, depending on the topic they've chosen or the kind of interest they have, and of course, the context in which they plan to use that information. So students basically just need to understand that the resources they will use for an argument essay may differ from what they would use in a project that requires them to use archival material or current events material. And of course, that um, depending on the assignment, they can use multiple kinds of resources, right? So um, this is actually the moment where I want to show you Um, a chart that we have um, from Library 101, and I'm going to exit. Okay, so this chart is available on our um, Library 101 course, which um, was developed um, with students in mind. Fa some faculty actually assign um, parts of this course. It's, a, it's not required, um, but some faculty actually assign parts of this course for student use. Um, it's really helpful. It shows students um, a couple of different ways to um, learn about the resource, the research project, uh, research process, and also about information literacy. So this chart is really interesting and helpful. And again, this is something you can assign to your students. But what it does is give you an idea of different kinds of information, different types of information. And it really lays out um, ways that you can explain to students when to use information and for what purpose. So for instance, if they are looking to get background information on a particular topic for a research paper, for instance, they can refer to reference resources, right? And so for example, the Encyclopedia Britannica, um, the Oxford English Dictionary, both of which we have at UDC. Okay. Students can also um, access, obviously, things like textbooks and books for their research. It's helpful for them to note that they can use multiple resources in their projects, in their assignments, right? So, for instance, you may um, require them to find background information on a particular topic, so they'll use a reference resource for that. But then, of course, you may require them to also use some scholarly articles, right? Um, so scholarly articles are high-quality um, academic information. They're usually published by academic journals. Um, and so students have to get an understanding of what context they can use the information in and um, also, more importantly, how to find that information. So back to my presentation. All right, so once students have an understanding of what kind of information they need. Oh, before I mention that, um, so one way to help students uh, support students as they learn to determine their information need is to be really clear about what kinds of resources students need to use for their assignments. So for instance, you could briefly remind students about the differences between primary sources and secondary sources. Uh, you could also help students understand different kinds of academic sources. So of course, academic resources include things like books, but they also include scholarly articles um, and they include dissertations as well. So um, for example, an assignment that requires students to write about current events may not necessarily have scholarly uh, articles written about it, um, but there may be newspaper top uh, articles or um, magazine articles about that current event. So it makes more sense to um, ask a student to use a certain kind of source, depending on the kind of assignment that they're working on. All right, so once a student has a good understanding of what they need, um, they need to know how to find those sources. And so again, this is where I'm going to plug um, UDC's library's resources um, and what you have access to as faculty. Um, of course, what students have ac access to as well. 
So I'm going to show you all, and this is probably refresher for most of you, but the library's um, research and find page. Right, so here you have access to UDC Search, which is our catalog. Um, and this provides students with access to materials of all kinds, including books, um, and that does include pre, uh, print books as well, um, periodicals and journal articles. Um, so they can start with the UDC catalog. Of course, we are part of the WRSC consortium. So um, that means that students have access to uh, materials, uh, reference materials, resource materials from a number of different schools, including UDC. And of course, students also have access to the A to Z resources list, which is our um, databases. So it's really helpful. Um, and I do this often when I go into classrooms for library instruction, ranging from um, a basic sort of library orientation to helping students um, with more specific searches depending on assignment that they may have coming up or something that they're working on I always take them to this page and I demonstrate that they can use filters for a lot of different things before they even get into a database right so students have access to um, databases organized by subject Right? So if you have a student um, in a particular course who's working on a paper that falls under a particular category, they can um, find databases organized by subject. It is also alphabetical. So a database like um, Statista is really helpful for statistics. Right? If there is a database that the student already has in mind or that you have in mind that you'd like your student to, to actually use, um, you can find it in a, a couple of different ways on our main page. The other thing that's really helpful to note is our popular databases on the right-hand side. So um, in particular, as I mentioned with the um, types of information, if students are looking for background information or reference information, um, we do have popular databases on the right-hand side, including Credo Reference and the Encyclopedia Britannica, um, which does provide them with that with that kind of information. All right, so the other thing I want to briefly mention is that you can um, ask your students to search um, outside of UDC resources. Of course, we prefer that they would start with the resources that they have available to them for various reasons, including um, having to evaluate you know, sources. But um, there are gonna be instances when using sources that are not available at UDC is gonna be really helpful. So for instance, if you are requiring your students to use video, like something from YouTube um, for a particular assignment, um, that would be an instance where they would use um, a resource outside of UDC. Um, there are also also instances where perhaps they're researching a particular organization, maybe a local organization. And so going to that um, organization's website directly um, or you know, finding information about that resource directly online makes more sense than using a UDC resource. Okay. And of course, you can also ask a librarian um, and you can encourage your students to ask a librarian. So if there's something that they're looking for um, that we may not have access to easily or that they can't find easily, um, that is where a librarian comes in and we can help them find that resource or a similar resource. All right, so once students have um, a good understanding of what they need and they've figured out where to find their resources, um, they then have to evaluate which sources um, to decide to use for their assignment. So first thing to think about is the context, right? So encourage students to use the right kind of information for the right kind of assignment. So for instance, again, you know, not using a scholarly article or scholarly um, reference for something that has to do with current events um, or using a magazine article when they have been required to use a scholarly article. Um, as a resource, right? Also ask them to consider the five W's. So the who, what, when, where, and why, right? So who publishes the information? Um, who's the intended audience? Um, thinking about what kind of information that resource provides is also one step in evaluating. Um, when was it published? And how frequently is that information updated? Right. Where was the information published? What kind of resource it is? And thinking about why you would use that um, source as part of your research um, and more specifically in what context is it important to use um, or appropriate to use that information in your research okay the other thing to think about would be authority um, so you can remind your students to consider the authority of a resource um, and specifically ask them to consider a few things so does this resource have the authority to speak on this topic and how can they tell that right what perspectives are missing from that resource um, whose voices may or may not be heard heard um, from, from that resource. Um, are there other authoritative uh, resources that can provide these same perspectives? Um, and then is there 
another resource with stronger authority on this topic are all great questions to consider. And then the final thing to consider in terms of evaluating your resources is thinking about bias, right? So reminding your students to consider whether the information expresses a specific point of view um, or opinion. Is the information written by an organization that supports a particular agenda? Um, and is it based on factual evidence from research or experiments? All right, so these are all things to consider and to help your students consider when they are evaluating their um, resources. And that is the end of my presentation. Um, are there any questions? And I can stop sharing. Please feel free to either pop your question in the chat or unmute yourself. We're happy to hear either. All right, not seeing anything come in. I want to thank you for attending today's webinar and the recording will be posted on our YouTube page in just about an hour or so. So now I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you.